So this time, we are going to talk about alternative medicines. Alternative medicines are treatments that are applied along with typical and accepted medical treatments but are not considered standard. This includes herbal medicine, magnetic fields, nutrition therapy, acupressure, movement therapy, mental exercises. But this time, we are going to talk about the five common alternative medicines. Acupuncture is a traditional Chinese medicine that involves insertion of very thin needles through a person's skin at specific points on the body to various depths. It is said that acupuncture can control some types of body pains like spine pain, stiff neck, vascular dementia, pertussis, neuralgia, light and low blood pressure, painful periods, allergic rhinitis, facial pain, morning sickness, sprain, and can reduce the risk of stroke. Take note na ang ginagamit dito ay spatial needles. Ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng gumamit ng kung ano-anong klaseng needles lang at hindi um, hindi basta-basta ang pag-i-insert dito kasi kailangan expert ang gumagawa kasi yung mga expert na yan ang nakakaalam kung saan part pwedeng i-insert yung mga needles na gagamitin. Next is we have reflexology. Reflexology is a type of massage that involves applying different amount of pressure for the feet, hands, and ears. When we say reflexology, it is based on the theory that these body parts are connected to certain organs and body system. It is a Chinese medicine wherein different body parts correspond with different pressure points on the body. The reflexologists use maps of these points in the feet, hands, and ears to determine where they should apply pressure. So take note that for a reflexologist expert siya dahil um, kailangan alam niya kung saan yung mga specific points where to apply pressure. Kasi naniniwala sila dito na yung mga uh, may points sa ating mga feet, hand, and ears na connected to the different organs in the body. Okay? So they believe their touch sends energy flowing through a person's body until it reaches the area in need of healing. Sumunod dito ay ang nutrition therapy. Approaches treatment of a medical condition by providing a tailored diet for the patient. Meaning, for nutrition therapy, this treatment is based on nutrition. So, they are going to check a person's nutrition status and give the right food or nutrients to treat conditions such as those caused by diabetes, heart diseases, and cancer. It may involve simple changes in a person's diet. And this may help the patients recover more quickly and spend less time in the hospital. So, yung mga kinakain natin, yung mga tinitake natin na food or nutrients may be lessen or uh, dinadagdagan in order to cure specific disease para mapadali yung paggaling mo sa mga diseases na yon. Okay? So, uh, nutrition therapist or si dietrician ang siyang mag, um, mag-evaluate sa'yo kung ano ba yung kulang sa katawan mo, ano ba yung sobra so, babawasan kung, kung sakasakaling kulang yung uh, uh, nutrients na ganito sa katawan mo, dadagdagan yung nutrient intake mo. Kung sakasakaling sobra naman, ay babawasan. Next is the acupressure. 
Acupressure uses the same technique as that of acupuncture. Ang pagkakaiba nga lang nila, acupressure does not use needles but hands to apply pressure on certain points of the body. Similar in the principle of acupuncture, physical pressure is applied to acupuncture points with the aim of clearing blockages in certain points. Pressure is being applied it's either ha- by hand, elbow, or with various devices but not needle. Okay? So we still, um, parang massage pa rin siya wherein pressure is being applied to certain points to clear blockages. And last one is the Ventosa Cupping Massage Therapy. Nakita ko kung paano gagawin yung Ventosa Cupping Massage Therapy. So, this procedure is done by placing inverted glasses that have flames from burning cotton on specific points in the body. It is believed to relieve muscle and joint pain. This cupping therapy is an ancient form of alternative medicine in which a therapist puts special caps on your skin for a few minutes to create suction. People get it for many purposes including the help with pain, inflammation, blood flow, relaxation and well-being and as a type of deep tissue massage. Cupping therapy might be trendy now but it's not new it dates back to ancient egyptian chinese and middle eastern cultures one of the oldest medical textbook in the world the ebers papyrus describe how the ancient egyptian used this in 1550 bc with this your therapist will put a flammable substance such as alcohol herbs or paper in a cup and set it on fire. As the fire goes out, he puts the cup upside down on your skin. As the air inside the cup cools, it creates a vacuum. This causes your skin to rise and redden as your blood vessels expand. The cup is generally left in place for up to 3 minutes. A more modern version of cupping uses a rubber palm instead of fire to create the vacuum inside the cup. Sometimes therapists use silicone cups, which they can move from one place to another on your skin for a massage-like effect. 